Good evening, everybody. It's Pam and Linda from Your Nurse Advocates Consulting. We want to welcome you to episode number 12. And Linda's going to share tonight, we're going to talk about the assisted living facilities, how that might be an option for others and what kind of services they may provide. So just wanted to welcome everybody and we'll jump right into it. So Linda, it's up. go for it. Oh, thank you. Um, glad everybody's able to join us. Um, this is a this is an interesting topic to discuss a lot of there's a lot of again myths and um misconceptions about assisted living assisted living is very different than a skilled nursing facility or a nursing home a nursing home provides a very high level of skilled care assisted living is under a whole different set of regulations and provides different levels of care Assisted living is for people who, as they age, cannot or can no longer take care of themselves independently at home, or they need some type of assistance. They may need something as simple as assistance with a bath. But assisted livings have quite a few benefits in regards to helping individuals who are having difficulties living independently in their current home setting. One of the things that is truly one of the greatest gifts of assisted living is the ability to have their caregivers in the assisted livings provide you with assistance with activities of daily living. That means bathing, dressing, hair washing, getting dressed, uh, getting undressed, assisting you or helping you in and out of the shower. Those are the types of things that the uh, caregivers at the assisted living provide for you, especially they do this to keep you safe so that you can be as independent as possible in your home. They assist with toileting, they assist with laundry, but those activities of daily living, when you think about it, as you age, one of the first issues that we all have is with our activities of daily living. Our bodies aren't as flexible anymore. We have issues that keep us from being as mobile as we were. We have issues in regards to our vision and or our hearing. So certain activities that we used to do with vigor years ago, we can no longer do. So in order to be safe and maintain a high level of independence, assisted livings can help with that realm of, of in, initiative and motivation to keep us independent and to keep us safe. The second thing that, or one of the other benefits, is that there's no home upkeep. So when you think about it, your home maintenance requires a lot. You're constantly having to either deal with the gutters, cleaning out the gutters, shoveling the snow, raking the leaves, trimming the trees, mowing the lawn, basic inside housekeeping, such as mopping floors, vacuuming, you know, changing the filters on your sink and your refrigerator, cleaning the stove, all of that upkeep is not needed in the assisted living. There are people there to help with that on a daily basis. A lot of that is included in the care for at the assisted living. It's part of that. So there's no home upkeep for you to worry about. And as we get older, climbing up on a roof and cleaning out the gutters could be a very serious, dangerous thing as you get older. Might have been okay in your 20s and 30s and early 40s, but as you get older, that becomes a that could become a very big safety issue. And so assisted livings will help with that home upkeep because you don't have it anymore at the assisted living. And I can tell you a lot of the assisted living communities, because they're called communities, they're not facilities, the assisted living communities are very um, beautiful. They're, they have a lot of different amenities. So it's really important that as you, if this is an option that you're looking at, that you really investigate these assisted living so that they can meet your needs, both from a amenities perspective, and from a financial perspective, because there is a cost to living in an assisted living. 
There's also issues in regards to safety and security. One of the greatest things about assisted living is that there are procedures and processes in place to keep you safe in your home. They have a security system within getting into the community that you have to sign in. And then you have your apartment, which also has a secured lock and or door. And inside the your apartment, there are safety rails, there are guard rails, there are things in there to help keep you safe and help prevent falls from occurring. Also, one of the other great issues is that they deal very well with infection control and your safety and security are utmost in their mind. They want to make sure that everyone is maintained safely and securely within their apartments and within the community. So, that is just one of the common benefits is that safety and security. Any type of maintenance that also needs to be done within the apartment that you are living in, in the assisted living, is also taken care of by their maintenance team. And if there's a lock that needs to be replaced, if there is an issue with your car and you need, you've need you locked your keys in it, their security person and their maintenance personnel will help take care of that. Their walkways are shoveled and salted. There is no hazards in place for you to, to fall. So everything is maintained in a very high, safe, and secure manner. One of the other things is also in regards to dietary. As we get older, our dietary needs change. And one of the great things about assisted living is a lot of times they have specialized dietary services within their communities. They have specialized uh, dietary services with a chef and with staff that provide specific menus for people within that assisted living. A lot of times they'll have, they'll drop specific menus that will bring in ethnic types of origins. They will also cater to specialized diets. So if you are on a low sodium diet or if you're on a cardiac or a kidney diet, those things will help be maintained within that assisted living. They will provide and work with you to make sure that you're compliant with that dietary regimen. If there is no real dietary needs, the food there, I can tell you from visiting some of these communities, is really, really quite good. It's very kind of a white linen and it's served in either in a buffet style or in a um, a plated style and the food is usually presented very well and it's very tasty and it meets a lot of different palates and it meets a lot of different different tastes so and and they will also provide certain types of ethnic nights. So they'll have a night where they'll have, like on St. Patrick's Day, a lot of the communities that I've worked within had a big St. Patrick's Day fair. When a lot of the festivals are going in, like Italian Fest and Irish Fest, they'll have those types of fairs also in the assisted living. Because food, believe it or not, is something that is very social to all of us, and it's very, very important for us. Food brings us together. It is something that we as human beings enjoy, and it's one of the most important things that draws people into, into social gatherings. So assisted living facilities or communities have identified thing that they feel is also brings people it allows them to network, it allows them to make friends, it allows them to socialize, and it also provides a very warm and comfortable environment. So meals within the assisted living community are provided usually anywhere from two to three meals a day based on your menu choice or what you feel is important for you. Some people decide, I only want the assisted living to provide me with lunch and dinner. Well, that's fine. Others want breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's also fine. But that's something you work with with the people that are going to help you with the agreements and with the move-in process. All of these things are part of the amenities. But again, it's very important that when you go to or tour or research an assisted living, that you identify what is important to you. Is it important that you stay in the community that you have lived in all your life? Or is it more important that you're closer to your children or to your friends? 
also you need to know what types of amenities are important. Is it important for you to have a pool there or very close by? Is it important for you to have an exercise room? Is it important for you to have a lot of activities or where you can participate in a lot of activities? Is there a men's club there or a women's club there? Is there a pool table there? Is there a card room there where you can play poker on Friday night with some of the other gentlemen? What is important to you? What do the apartments look like? And also, what is the cost? What is this going to cost me? And can I continue to stay there as my health declines, as I continue to age? Can I age in place? Those are important questions that you want to ask as you research and tour these assisted livings. One of the things that I recommend when you tour in assisted living is that you try to do it around mealtime. And the reason I say that is so that you can see how food is served. You can see how individuals socialize in the assisted living setting. And you can also ask them to sample a meal or some of the food. Because if you're going to be eating it, you want to know what it tastes like. So you can ask for a sampling of the food and ask for a copy of that week's menu. And if there's any type of special activities, ask them for the activities calendar. Ask them to explain the activities calendar. Ask them to explain the menu. All of these things are important to understand as you research and tour an assisted living because you need to make sure it's the right place for you. You don't want to continue to move in or move from place to place. One of the other areas you want to look at is what is the size of the apartment or the, the area that I need to live in comfortably so that I can age in place? Do I want a one bedroom? Do I want something with two bathrooms? Do I want? Is it important for me to have a patio or a deck? Do I need a full-size kitchen? What is important for me for this assisted living? How do I achieve these goals and how much will it cost? And what does the area around me look like? And where are things in the area that I can go to? So when I walk out in my assisted living, can I go to the neighborhood restaurant or a diner, or just take a walk around the block? And as your needs become more complex, you also need to ask about things like staffing. What is the staffing ratio for assisted living? There is no real perfect number, I can tell you that, which is very different than a skilled uh, facility and or a hospital. So there are ratios for resident caregiver in those types of settings, but in the assisted living, because care is so differentiated and so unique, there really isn't. But just note that the higher complexity of the individuals within that environment, the higher the caregiver, uh, caregiver resident ratio should be. So there should be more caregivers and less residents. So it should be one caregiver maybe to for residents in certain assisted livings, where in others, where individuals are more independent and people are more and need have less needs, it might be a one to six or one to seven or one to eight ratio. But those questions are important to ask. One of the other areas that you need to look at is what types of activities can I be involved in? What did I like to do? What do I like to do now? As an individual, do I like to go bowling? Is there an opportunity for me to go out on bowling outings? Is there an opportunity for me to play poker on Friday nights or play euchre? What is important to me? Can I still accomplish those social and meet those social needs within this assisted living? So looking at those amenities is really important. Is there an exercise room? If you're used to going out and walking every day, is there a way that I can do it? It within the assisted living when the weather is bad and is there ability to go out when the weather is good? Is there a place? Is there an exercise room? Is there an activities room? Is there a quiet area? Because maybe you like to read a lot and you just like you like going to a library. Is there a place where I can enjoy that? Some also want to know where's the closest? Is there a chapel there that I can attend services? Is it a non-denominational type of chapel? Do they have specific types of services there on certain days of the week? Those things are also important because our meeting our spiritual needs are just as important as meeting our physical needs. One of the other opportunities that assisted living provides is socialization with other individuals of the same age group. 
when we're living in our own homes, maybe in our own neighborhoods, a lot of times our neighborhoods, as we age, our neighborhoods change. People get older, they sell their homes, other people move in, and you may not have those same types of relationships with your neighbors as you did with the people that you've lived there with for the last 35 or 40 years. So socialization within assisted living is also very important and you get to meet other people people who maybe who have lived in that community in the same community you have for the last 30 or 40 years but they may have lived across town or may they may have lived you know 10 blocks away but you never met them you never knew them or people that were part of your same church group or people that went to the same stores that you did or even worked in the same environments that you did there's a lot of opportunity to meet other individuals that have got the same interests that you do, have grown up in the same era, have the same taste in music, the same taste in card games, the same taste in social outing, same taste in food and in drink. So there's a lot of opportunity to, to meet and engage with other individuals. A lot of times, if we're living alone in our home, the it be, can become overwhelming. And a lot of times, just the upkeep of the home and just maintaining ourselves and the grocery shopping and all the things that we have to do prevents us from meeting those social needs that we all have and meeting those needs spiritually also. So assisted living can provide a lot of those entities. It also can provide transportation for those who are no longer able to drive or cannot drive for whatever reason or don't feel comfortable driving later in the day or during the day. They can drive, but they choose not to. A lot of the assisted living facilities provide transportation to doctor's appointments, to outings, to shopping malls, to different areas where you can go either as a group or if you need transportation individually to go to a specific appointment, such as to a dentist, physical therapy, also to um, your doctor, it can be provided there. But on another note, a lot of your assisted livings also have what they call Medicare B benefits there, such as therapy. So a lot of times you don't even need to leave the assisted living community to get those Medicare B benefits, such as physical, occupational therapy and or speech therapy. So the communities have someone that they have that comes in to provide that. So transportation and Medicare B benefits are also can also be provided there, including things such as lab draws. A lot of times assisted livings will have what they call wellness clinics there and they'll they will uh, contract with a lab company to come in certain days of the week to do scheduled labs if, so that you don't have to go out and get them done. So again, as you research, if you decide that assisted living is the option for you because of certain things that have changed in your life, ask those questions because it's really important that you have your needs met both currently and as you move forward. Pricing and price points are going to be vary based on the community, based on the amenities, and based on the care that is provided. A lot of times there is a base rate of, of pay that you pay for the apartment based on the size of the apartment and what you're needing. A lot of times you will pay extra if you need extra care. So if you need someone to administer your medication, you might be paying extra for that. If you need someone to help you in and out of the shower, you might be paying extra for that. So all of those things will factor into the overall monthly price that you will need to pay for assisted living. A lot of times that may end up being a lot less expensive than having someone in your home based on the care needs that you have at that point in your life. Other times having someone in your home for a minimum of two to three hours a day just to help with minimal needs may be more appropriate. But as you age and as things change in your life, you need to take a look at what are other options for care. One of the things that we at Your Nurse Advocate Consulting can do for you is actually walk you through those options and help you with good recommendations and information to make informed decisions about what is the right care level for you, what makes the most sense for you at this point in your life, and how do we walk you through futuristically for that next 
phase. So it may be fine for you right now to have someone just coming into your home, but what happens in a year from now or two years from now as your disease process progresses or as your body and, and you, we all, as we age, as we continue to age, because we're not getting any younger, I haven't figured out that pill yet. So when I do, I'll make sure to make millions on it, but we're all going to continue to age. And as we age, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to have someone help you. It's okay to want to be safe and to live a quality of life. Assisted living can help provide those things along with if you choose not to have assisted living, having someone, as I've talked to in the previous week, having someone come to your home to help provide those cares or that assistance as you need it. But assisted living is usually that step that actually walks you through it. One of the other things that assisted living does provide you with is privacy. Because you have your own apartment, you can, there are common areas. There's like the dining area. There's a common area. There's usually an activity area. There's an exercise area and several different areas for socialization. In fact, a few of them even have like little breakfast cafes where everybody goes in and has coffee and donuts in the morning and then they go to lunch somewhere else. But you can get away from that all in the privacy of your own apartment. So there is a lot of privacy there. A lot of times individuals feel that they give up their privacy when they go into an assisted living community and they don't. You maintain your privacy and you have the right to refuse anything and everything and you have the right to make, maintain your privacy. So if you don't want housekeeping to come in, you don't need to. If you don't want the certain things, unless you it provides safety and there's a safety concern that will be where a discussion comes in but you always have rights and you maintain your rights throughout the assisted living and always in the assisted living is the encouragement for independence the assisted living staff wants to make sure that you always maintain a high level or your highest level of independence, that they do not want to take that away from you. So know that you can always, you are always a participant in your own care. You always have the right to make decisions regarding your care. You have the right to refuse things and they want you to participate and be social at whatever level you feel the most comfortable with. If you've always been a very private individual, then you may not want to go out on the weekly outings to shopping or to restaurants or to tours. You may not want that. You may just want to sit quietly in a common area and read a book and that's okay too. It's whatever makes you comfortable. But the point of an assisted living is to provide you with a level of care that you need at that point in your life that you're finding difficult to achieve living on your own in your current home setting. So with that, I want to open it up. Pam, do you have any questions or comments? You're on mute, Pam. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I'm just talking away. Um, so when you were talking about the co cost, I know it's varied and I know it depends on a level of care, but could you just talk a minute about the difference in, in how sometimes a nursing home can get paid for, but most of the time an assisted living is private pay? Yeah, assisted living a lot of times is can either be paid for uh by Medicaid, a lot sometimes will cover uh, assisted living. Uh, certain types of family care, community care programs will also cover assisted living. A lot of times it is privately paid for based on the level of care. long term insurance will cover. But those things searched when you fill out the the application for an assisted living community, a lot of those things will be researched and those are the things you're going to want to talk about. If you have long-term care insurance, what does that policy state? How can you get that money out to help cover your expenses in assisted living? What will it cover? Um, how, how much do you have to cover first out of your own pocket before that will kick in? What will, fam will family care cover it? Are you eligible to even apply for family care? What types of assets do you have in order to be able to have certain a certain level of care within the assisted living? 
assisted living communities want to work with the individual. They want to make sure that they provide you with the cares that you need at that point in time, if it is the right care setting for you. So they will work with you on the financial end of it. And you can also ask the assistance of an elder care attorney to help walk you through some of those financial options to help cover the costs of assisted living. And I do recommend that you also seek out an elder care attorney prior to actually moving in or signing any type of agreement. Have an elder care attorney look at your finances and actually help you make those financial decisions in regards to what is the right care option financially. What can you afford at this point in time and what can you afford in the future? Um, another question I had, uh, Linda, so what when we're dealing or we're looking at families with their elder parents or elder family members, what are some of the things that we could do to help them decide whether or not assisted living is the right level of the care or versus a nursing home? Essentially, that would mean having a professional such as us going out to the home or to the current home setting, whether that be their private home or whether it be in a group home or in with their son or their daughter or wherever and assessing what their current needs are, doing a functional assessment, working with them, seeing and talking with them. I think part of the biggest thing that we can do is listen. We listen to what their needs are and how what they're looking for, what what is important to them. What can they do currently? What are they hoping to achieve? What are their goals for their care and their health? So is assisted the right option based on what they're stating their needs are and what they feel is important to them? If, they're, if we as a professional go out there and they're saying, you know, we don't know what to do. We don't know where to, to place mom or dad. She's having some problems. Well, it's important for us to sit down and say, well, what are the issues? What does the current situation look like? What can and cannot be done currently? And what are we having issues with? And what are our goals that we want to achieve? Is the goal for mom or dad to stay within their own home? Is the goal for them to stay in their home until they can no longer safely do it? And that's where assisted living comes in to help them. And then how can we help them choose the appropriate assisted living community for them based on what their needs are and what their likes and dislikes are and what the family feels is appropriate and what the cost price point is for them. But those are things we can help them with, but it's based on assessment and a functional assessment. And I know, as Linda, you mentioned, and, and I know in our area, assisted living livings are uh, similar to where they may have different floors, different apartments, maybe on the most um, independent, you have an apartment, you may have a couple of rooms, you, you need minimal assistance, but then they have different floors based on different levels of care. You may end, if you need a little bit more care, maybe you, you just have a room, a large room with, with a bed. And, and so I guess, uh, Linda, my last question is what would be, I mean, is it safe to say that in order to be appropriate for assisted living, you should be, you know, ambulatory or, or somewhat independent or where, where, where do you draw the line there? Well, it, a lot of it depends on your diagnosis and your functional assessment. There are assisted living. You don't necessarily have to be um, usually people who are totally who are ambulatory and who are totally cognitive in there and can and just need a little help with medication management may not need a true may not need that that one level of assisted living because there's different levels of assisted living. So based on what the functional assessment is on our end and what the assisted living feels is within their licensure and what cares they provide will determine where that individual resides. Do they belong in a memory care, on a memory care floor because they have moderate dementia and they are, even though they're still ambulatory, they wander and they're forgetful and they can't take their medication and they can't manage certain things without serious cueing and without a lot of you know de attention to detail. So it will depend a lot on what their diagnosis is and a lot of what that 
assisted living a community can provide for them in regards to what their needs are and how they can meet their needs. Uh, there are some that, as you're right, there are some floors that in one community, the second floor may be memory care. So people or individuals and residents who have moderate uh, dementia may go, may require care there. Maybe fourth floor is for people who are in residents who are having more uh, physical issues in regards to meeting their ADLs. So they may have more complex needs and a higher level of care. Whereas on maybe first and third floor, it's pretty close to independent where they just need a little assistance with bathing, dressing, and maybe some med administration. So a lot of it depends on the actual assisted the living community themselves and what services they provide and whether they can age in place or whether they can whether they can only provide a certain level up to a certain point and then they need to transition to another assisted living or to a skilled facility. Okay, last question I have. If you could just um, in looking at assisted living, could you just touch on the different the difference in the level of care where at the assisted livings, say we have just, you know, resident aides versus like a nursing home, you will have, you know, certified nursing assistants. Can you just touch base on the different level of care there at this that you might see at assisted living? At the assisted living um, communities, there is, they will, not every caregiver will be a CNA. It's, there's no need for that because assisted livings are basically more of a non-medical model versus a medical model or a high level skilled model like a skilled nursing facility. In a skilled nursing home, you'll have CNAs and you'll have RNs and LPNs um, around the clock. Um, or at least one or two of those nursing staff around the clock along with all your CNAs, but they all are CNAs. Whereas in assisted living, they have um, personal care workers, medication, techs. They also have um, their managers may or may not be nurses. There is nursing oversight for clinical components and a lot of times they're overseen by LPNs and also an RN. But again, it's a more non-medical model. So they have trained caregiver staff that will administer medication and administer certain services for individuals. As I said, they it's more non-medical, more socially driven versus skill driven. Okay. I think that's that's all I had. Um, you know, it's it's always a great option, you know, for people that feel that a nursing home is not quite the right fit for them. They're still very social. There's they still have a lot of their memory. They're still pretty sharp. Where the assisted living, as Linda said, gives them the community. They're around other people. They can participate in activities with people of their own age. And yet they have someone to cook and clean and, you know, make their bed mm -hmm. and you know, that kind of good stuff for them. So it actually can be a really, really great uh, situation mm -hmm. for the right fit. So is mm -hmm. it, Linda, is there anything that you'd like to say as far as wrapping up on assisted livings? Just that I think that if the, if it is something that you're looking at, my my recommendation would be to research them. And also write down a list of what's important for you to have in an assisted living. What are the important things that are important to you, along with cost? Talk to an elder attorney and then research them and then tour them. Visit, visit, visit. Ask questions. Ask about staff. Ask the same things you would if you were hiring a home health agency, a home care agency, or someone privately for your home. Ask a lot of questions because the only way you're going to know if it's a good fit for you is if you get all of your questions answered and you feel comfortable with the answers that they give you. You can also seek out the help of a professional such as us from your nurse advocate consulting and we can help you walk that journey. We can help you with those recommendations and help you make informed decisions in regards to the right care level at the right time in the right place. Awesome. Thank you, Linda. Well, just a couple of announcements and we're going to wrap up episode 12. Uh, we've put in, as usual, you can find um, all our blog posts and Linda 
has, uh, we're going to share Linda's information on a blog post on our um, Your Nurse Advocate Consulting website. We will also include this video. So you'll have some written information as, as well as, as the video information on assisted living. So you can find that on our website. The other thing that's coming up is we are participating with uh, a nurse wellness coach to bring you a uh, 28 days health to happiness program. I just found out today, I'm really excited towards the end of the program. We are going to have a physician, an internal medicine physician, Dr. Karen Wolf is going to come on and talk about wellness. So she's going to uh, talk about uh, her program, which she calls the Sugar Buster. And so uh, that's, we're excited to bring you that. Uh, last I want to mention is Wednesday night. Don't forget to join us at uh, seven o'clock. We are going to have Tosh Patterson come on. She is a uh, certified uh, life coach. She's also a, a former educator in the school system and her passion is decluttering. And she's going to share information on what they call a Swedish method of declutter, which mean as we get older and we've accumulated all these things in our home through our whole life, what do we do with them and how do we downsize? How do we declutter? So excited to learn about those things from Tosh. So, so please join us um, on Wednesday night. And with that being said, please enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have an awesome day and we'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night.